In this bonus episode, I had a chance to sit down over the weekend with Habtam Cheney, a runner who ran a 2.16 in his debut marathon at the McCurdy Micro last year. And in just a couple of weeks, he's going to be running in the U.S. Marathon Olympic trials. Uh, I wanted to sit down with him to talk about his journey and preparation getting from graduating from college just last year to now lining up at the trials and everything that he's been doing to get ready, who he's been running with, the group chat that I think is just an absolutely fascinating story and what shoes he's been wearing and is going to wear on a race day. So hope you guys enjoy this one, my conversation with Haptamu. Cheney. Yo, Haptamu, what's going on, man? It's good to see you. Thanks for taking some time to talk with us today. It's good to be here. Uh, it is a, currently a Saturday, and the date is January 20th when we're talking about this. Um, I know you're getting ready for the trials. Um, tell me about where you are uh, in terms of your training block, and then what was it like for you just like just today, Saturday morning? Um, so we are... Two weeks after the trial, exactly today. Okay. Uh, yeah. We're we're on a slow taper. I'm still running like 105 this week, so okay. it's still it's like a slow taper. But um, I mean, this is the biggest block of training I've had. I can't say my most successful one. I've only done two marathon blocks, and they've been back to back in a span of like five months. Okay. So I can't really say this is my best training block I've ever had. So it's okay. kind of tough on that one. Uh, today, uh, we did uh, one of our shorter long runs uh it was supposed to be 18 i only ended up only doing 16 it was like super cold outside with a two mile pickup around marathon pace okay so today just to finish off mileage and just capping off the week with two solid long two solid workouts and then an easier long run than usual all right and how, how are you feeling now kind of like starting to get into the taper oh i think this week was probably the best i've had in workouts in terms of like because the last couple of weeks, I've been running like 110, 115. The first two workouts of the week went really well. Uh, we had um, Tuesday, we had a workout. It was like fatigue mile repeats. We did eight miles around like 520. And then we went to the track and did miles at 10K pace. Uh, that was probably the best combo I've ever had in that workout. And then we came back on Thursday. And then we were supposed to do eight miles at marathon pace. But somehow I got closer to half marathon pace than marathon pace. Just everything just was clicking. Um, so we did that. And I did eight miles at like 450 felt amazing for the altitude and everything. That's probably the fastest I've ever done that workout. Awesome. Um, and then yesterday I probably ran way too much for an easy day. I <laughs> ended up on like 15. Okay. So I think I suffered a little bit today because of that. But besides that, like I had two solid workouts and an easier long run because normally we do anywhere from 20 to 25 on long runs. But this week we were instructed to not go farther than 18. Okay. All right. Uh, well, let's take a step back, though, first for some of the people that might be watching. They might not be familiar with you. I first kind of started noticing you through your social media work, you know, stuff that you were doing on YouTube and on Instagram. Um, but for those of you who don't know, your running channel over there on Instagram is uh, Running Hobbs. And tell me about how long you've been doing that. I started that the moment I transitioned immediately as soon as I graduated. Um, I immediately made that account documenting my uh, first attempt at the OTQ, which the plan was to run a half marathon, hit hit the standard, and then do a long, slow build to the trials. That was my original plan. Okay. Um, so I, I made that Instagram account just because of that, and then uh, race day came. Uh, I failed to achieve that, but for some, from from that just from that journey, I gained a little bit of traction from on the social media part, and then people were like, oh, like you'll do, you'll do fine, and then from there is when I found. And the McCurdy uh, training group where they, the coach like reached out and was like, Hey, like we have a race coming up. If you don't, and don't, don't end up going to Chicago, like we would love to have you and stuff like that. And then just pretty much start documenting everything from there. So all this is pretty recent. It seems cause you just graduated this year. You were at Utah Valley. Is that right? Yeah. I graduated in yeah late may and then the, i was running mainly 10ks and then the goal was usa 10k and then go straight to the roads um but i didn't know like it was up in the air because not a lot of people were signing up for usa 10ks and so i was like oh, i don't think i'm gonna make it in and then, like last minute i found out i made it in just the whole fiasco but yeah it's it's been a good transition to the roads okay and so the, so your first road race post-college was uh, an OTQ attempt in the half marathon. That was at Grandma's, is that right? Yeah. 
And then you ran a 63 and changes, if I'm remembering it correctly. Yeah, um, 63.19. What is the standard to make it in with a half? I'm, I understand uh, that off the top 62, of my head. 62.59. Okay, so you were close. You were really close on that first. Yeah. Okay. And then transitioning then from that half to McCurdy, that was your first like marathon training block that you did. Mm -hmm. uh, who's yeah. helping you through this? Are you having training partners, coaching? Well, can you tell me a little bit about that situation? So on the first build, I pretty much coached myself into the first build. Uh, I just did what I felt was best in my interest. I've had I had other inputs from like some really good runners from Utah. I've had like Rory Linkletter was reaching out and like, hey, like you need to find a coach. And so that they're like more structured because like Rory follows me on Strava. So he's seen all the things that I do. Um, so on my first build, I didn't do the smartest things, but like my workouts looked amazing. Like I had okay. some really impressive workouts and just did all that by myself. I like, I was still running cross country races, but I was treating them like workouts. So I would go do like the invite section, the open section, and then I'll do a temp right afterwards. So I was doing three AKs back to back. Okay. Of all, under, yeah. all under 25. So I was just like training yeah. races, like it's workouts. So like I was just pretty much coaching myself through the first build. And I, I wasn't doing, I didn't maybe two long runs. So I think oh, that's okay. where Rory was like, hey, like, he's like, dude, like long runs are important when it comes to the marathon. So I like neglected the long runs and the fueling. So that's like, there was still like the learning aspect. And after my first build, I reached out to Connor Mans and Clayton Young. I'm like, hey, like, I would love to join you guys and this and that. And then they were, they were super open and allowed me to join. And then Ed was on it slowly. And then Ed's been uh, super helpful in this in this build. After running 260 on McCurdy, they saw that like I went for 211 pace. Like So on McCurdy, I told myself, like I didn't come here to just like participate. I wanted to see what I could do in my debut. So I went with the 211 pacers as long as I could. Uh, and then at the end of the day, I had I was just feeling issues. It just... I tore it started to bonk, but it wasn't a crazy bonk. It was just still ran nine miles of five twenty was mm -hmm. my bonk. Um okay. but that's, that's I, not a bad bonk as far as bonks yeah. go. <laughs> so yeah, they saw a lot of potential in me and then since after my first marathon, Ed Eystone's been coaching me and they're like telling like just helping me with the, the whole marathon transition and trying to run as fast as possible the trials. And so uh is that were you you were already in the area to be able to train with these guys? Is that what it was, or did you have to move to be able to get closer to these guys? Uh, so the thing is, Utah Valley and BYU are about five miles apart. Okay, all right. So I was I I, I kind of live closer to BYU than I do at UVU, anyways. My house is like, like I can get to BYU maybe one light stop. Okay, away. okay. So I was closer there, anyways, and then all the workouts they do was pretty much around my house. So I was. Okay. It was an easy transition for me. Like, so were you just like, hey, I see these guys and I'm just going to hop in one day? Or <laughs> how, how, um, how did that, did you slide into someone's <laughs> DMs? How'd that work? Tell me about that part. Um, I, luckily, it just everybody in Utah knows each other. Okay. So okay. it was helpful. Like, I, I'm not from Utah or anything. So like, I didn't know. Like, I, I, there's some people that I knew that knew Connor Mans. So I just, I got, I got in touch with Connor Mans through some friends. And my roommate is actually friends with him from high school. So that there's, there's all these connections helped and I texted Mance and then Mance was the one relaying all the messages to me because I wasn't in the group chat for a while. So he was like, Hey, we're going to be here if you want to come join us. And then doing that, like, but the, the first few, like the first two months, actually, I just, I, I got tossed around. Like uh, I'm not used to doing workouts every other day. So like I, I was just getting absolutely dropped every, like I would do well on the first workout of the week. And then the rest of the week, I was just like hanging off with your life. Um, but yeah, they were just super helpful and just encouraging. And like, I've come a long way since when I first joined them. Like the work, I, I'm learning more like the importance of just recovering, like on your one day of recovery you have, like just be smart and just don't do too much and just, yeah, it's been helpful. So are you in the group chat now? I am in the group chat. <laughs> <laughs> was it, was there like a ceremony or you're like, you're, you're in or how does that, how does that work? <laughs> No, Connor Mans has created a group chat and just added people. Okay, okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's amazing. Um, because it, I mean, it's it, it's kind of like hard as like a a normal runner to kind of envision that kind of situation that like a person can just be like, hey, I'm gonna go run with Clayton Young and Connor Mance and I'm gonna try to hold on, and even when I'm getting my butt kicked later in the week, I'm just gonna keep showing up. Um, it's just like mind box. It's it's like a movie script in, in my mind. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the biggest thing was we all, I also came to the conclusion of like, I am not a 2 a 208 marathoner and they're probably in better shape than 208. So 
I just like learning to take a step back and just like run my own paces. Like I'm not training alone. I have some, some days I have like Christian Allen, I have like Brandon Garnica. So most days I'm not doing the workouts alone. I always have people running similar paces to me. So like, we're always just like helping each other out. So it's the, the group's slowly getting bigger and like we're having more marathoners, my fitness level. So it helps to have people around like that as well. And are you like conveying messages about the group chat to other people now you're being like, you're not in the group um, chat yet, but I'll send you a let you know where we're at. Is that, is that how it works? Um, no, there, so <laughs> it's easier to get in the group if you're a BYU alumni. Oh, it makes sense. It makes sense. So they're, they're all BYU alumni and then there's a mass group chat as well in Utah. It's okay. for the long runs. So on okay. Saturday oh, okay. long runs, anyone's welcome. Anyone's welcome. Like, oh, that's really cool. Uh, okay. So they usually add, I think it's like 50 or 60 people in that group chat. Oh, okay. And they, we, we, we just send a location and be like, hey, we're going to be here at 8 a.m. You're more than welcome to just come join. And okay. uh, everybody knows the, the expectation that I run, which is sub sixes. Like we okay. go straight to sub sixes. And then if you can hang on, it's great. But most of the time it's just like you're on your own if you fall off. But sure yeah it's it's really like it's the right community is growing quickly and everybody knows everyone so it helps that as well yeah and you mentioned that you're at altitude how high about is it, are you guys at three forty six hundred? i think yeah okay all right so yeah. enough that you're feeling it but not so mm -hmm. much that you can't recover quickly yeah that's that's in that's intense. Tell me what you were doing in terms of like recovering better. Some of the lessons that you learned because you mentioned like you were struggling in the beginning. Now you the big thing you learned was recovering. What are you doing different? Uh, one, I don't run on me. I don't run with Connor Mans and Clayton Young on my easy days because okay. my easy day is not the same <laughs> as theirs. Uh, like I will run with them some days if I feel good, but most days like I my recovery place is significant like they can easily run like 6 30 6 40 on the easy days okay i can't okay if i want to have a, like a good workout the next day yeah i can't so okay. i don't join yeah. them as much so i go around with somebody else that's maybe slower than me and like hey like when to go an easy like talking pace and stuff like that and just splitting up my runs into two uh as well as getting massages i've been getting on top of that because um when i was in college i got spoiled where i was getting like weekly massages so i'm trying to keep that going as well so I try to get weekly massages and then doing everything on my own as well of like formaling and just all the recovery modalities you, that you have. I try to do that and be as religious as possible on it. Sure. Um, one last question on this, on the group run. Um, who's mm -hmm. the chattiest in the group run? Like, on, like you mentioned going on an easy day, like on an easy day run, who's yeah. the one that's running their mouth the most? Uh, Connor Mance oh, yeah, loves, really? like, I think it's, I think Connor Mance, he loves running. So it's like, okay. it's always talk about like hypotheticals or just like, just always having some sort of like brings up conversation. He's a very conversational person. So he oh, loves okay. like interacting with everybody. Like on long oh. runs, he will go, he'll start from the front and then go all the way to back and just pretty much talk with everybody. Like oh, the okay. most we've had in, in the group is like 16 people at once. Mm -hmm. So he will eventually talk to with, with every single person by the end of the run. So he, he's a super friendly guy. Oh, okay. I did. I had. I had no idea. I don't think I've ever had the chance. I've seen him race uh, before yeah. in person, and he's an incredible racer. But I don't think I've ever had a chance to talk to him before, so I didn't know that. That's interesting. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the trials coming up. One, it looks like you're nice and cozy right now. I'm, I'm looking at you uh, through the video screen. It's cold outside, and I know it's cold over where you guys are. It's winter <laughs> in the mountains, yeah. right? So, mm -hmm. um, looking ahead towards the weather forecast i think it's a little too far out to see what the weather's going to be on race day but like um are you concerned that it could be a hot day i'm not crazy concerned because i like, i'm from arizona so uh most of my state meets were anywhere from 90 to 110 so i think i'm a really good heat runner and i hope i think the heat plays in my strength more than anything else but we're prepared for any situation that could happen, whether that being a fast race, we'll just adjust on the, like if it's a hot day, we'll adjust the pace a little bit and just focus on just cooling the core body temperature down. But I'm, I'm not crazy worried if, it, if it's going to be hot. Uh, I've, I've had success in the past of running in the heat, so I'm not crazy worried about that. Have you done anything to try to do any heat acclimation, like getting in a sauna or anything like that as you prepared for this race? Yeah, so we do sauna every other day. Oh, so okay. on, our, on our hard sessions, we go into the sauna for about 25, 30 minutes. When do you get into Orlando? Uh, I get into Orlando Wednesday night, and I'm staying near the Orlando airport and then just getting to the Athletes Hotel Thursday. Once you're there, kind of like, what, what are your 
what are your what's your plan what's the goals for what you want to achieve um on the day it depends and just how the race plans out i mean i, I would have to talk to connor and clayton just because i know they're the big factor in that race so it's just going to be depending on how the race goes i'm not going to run faster than five flats like i know like i know like it's unrealistic uh, of trying to go sub fives immediately uh so it's place as high as possible and run as fast as possible is, is the plan like i would love to run under 211.30 of getting the olympic b standard like i making the team for me is not a, a realistic thing it's more of like all right like let's run as fast as possible place as high as possible and get my name out there to potentially get a sponsor uh, coming to i mean this is the end of an olympic cycle year so more brands are be- going to be looking for athletes to sponsor for the next four years so um that yeah that's pretty much the name the plan of the game is just place as high as possible run as fast as possible is there anyone that you think that you might kind of start out pack up with in terms of heading out for the race or kind of like we'll see where everyone feels on race day um i think i don't know what i I, I, i'll talk to some people but i think christian allen is also in the race Mm -hmm. and he was on 210 something pace for a while at cim so he's i train with him quite quite often so maybe going out with him would, would be more realistic we've had we have a few people that are going to go between five flat and five oh fives. So that's the range I want to start with and hopefully try to negative split or just try to pick up as many people the second half of the race as possible. Most of the people that are watching this are also going to be shoe nerds. So can you break it down since you're currently unsponsored? Like what in a 105 mile week, um, what are what's the shoe lineup kind of kind of look like for you right now? Um, so I am a big ASICS fan. Like I love ASICS shoes. I've been working at ASICS since, since like 2018. I'm not working there anymore. Uh, I have friends that work at ASICS, but right now my favorite rotation of shoes are like for easy runs. I love the Nimbus 25s. They're the, probably the most comfortable shoes I've ever worn. So those I are my easy days on top of the Nova, Nova Blast 3s and then the Invincibles of the Nike. Nike Invincibles are the three easy day like rotations for me. And then workouts, I have pretty much every brand. I'm just trying to see which shoes is best for me. I've been trying to test out. Uh, so I have the Adidas Zeros. I have all three of them just because my school used to be sponsored by Adidas. So I usually use those for depending on the workout. Uh, like So some long runs, I do use the Adidas Zeros for those. And then I have the Nike Alpha Fly, uh, Gen 1, 2, and 3s. Uh, those have been more more like race-specific stuff. So like the AML PMP we did on Thursday, I wore the new Alpha Flies to see if how smooth race pace, race pace feels as well as I love the A6 super shoes. So like I, I, I liked the meta speed sky gen ones versus the twos. Cause the twos, I don't feel as efficient. Like my body gets stuck like at a certain pace and it just feels weird. The ones I, I can't find another pair. I wish I could find more pairs of the ones. Cause I, I love the A6 meta speed skies. Um, and then I've been trying the Mizunos lately because I got it, the new Mizuno Wave Rides. I don't know what the name of them, the Rebellion or something like that. Yeah, the Rebellion um, Pro version two or version one? I think the ones is okay. what I have. Yeah. Um, so I have pretty much everything just trying to like mixing it around as well. Like depending on the shoe you wear, like some of them are super aggressive on your toes. Some of them are just like, like flat and just like protect. It's just depending on them. Like some of them, I have more like my, they use more of my calves. So I try yeah. to stay away from some of them like that. Okay. But I'm not crazy picky. Um, at the end of the day, I will pick the shoes I feel is the most efficient and I feel the most confident in for race day. Uh, as of right now, I think the F5 threes are the ones I'm going to, I'm probably going to wear at the, at the trials. What else are you thinking kit wise, uh, for the kit race wise? Yeah. Uh, it's just, uh, lightest color i'm a bandit is what i'm wearing mm-hmm. so i just white bandit hat um pro, I'm, I'm gonna have to talk to tim rose tim about mm-hmm. from bandit to see if i can get a white top because mm-hmm. i have the small like neat uh, like lighter color jersey but it's kind of big for some reason i okay. i lost a little bit of weight since last time i wore it so i <laughs> i thought the small was good but i think i might have to get an extra small on that one okay and then just short shorts i've been trying to work out in half tights but mm. I think short shorts are superior in my opinion. So okay, just right. light color everything. Yeah, shave the hair. Just nice, all right, light as possible. Nice. Um, and yeah. then uh, nutrition wise, what's the plan? Nutrition is Morton. 
Okay. Uh, it's the gels and the drink mix. Do you go with ca- sprinkle out. calf or, or mix it up or just non calf <sighs> I think I'm probably going to have, so we have, we're, we're given six bottles mm-hmm. every four miles. So I will probably have four regular and two caffeinated. Okay. The okay. Yeah. And then just like the, th- what, the 320 mix or the 160 mix, whichever one? Uh, the, the 320. Yeah. The 320. Yeah, in the bottles. I know. And then I'm, I also hired um, a videographer for the trials. I'm going to try to post it. I'm going to try to post a video every single day leading up to the trial. It's not going to, I'm not going to be the one editing it, but like I told him, I'm like, Hey, like if you can make this, ha-, cause like I'm flying him out too. So I'm like, Hey, like if you can make this happen for me, like this would be cool. So we'll see how it goes. I don't know. Cause like logistically it's going to be tough for him to record edit while I'm like, yeah, wait, well, he's following me around all day, but I'm excited for her just document the whole journey. So, I mean, and I think that like, you know, number one, doing something like that, I know is not going to be cheap. Um, but yeah. I do think that it makes a ton of sense. And I think that a lot more people should be, should be doing it. Um, break it down for me. What's the thought process for you in hiring, like, and making that expense? I think it increases my value. I think at the trials, especially at least just cause I, I I am I went to school for marketing and it's just making yourself as appetizing as possible for sponsors. I like I know I'm not the fastest. I like like I'm just starting out in the sport and just documenting your journey of like from your first marathon to possibly your last marathon. Like just showing people like the transition period of like how long it takes to get to your peak and just like I will I plan on documenting this as much as possible and then the one thing, like I've talked to Clayton about, Clayton and Connor about this as well. Like they need to like see if they can hire somebody to do theirs because people are interested in see what, what they they do like on an everyday basis. And for me, it's still tough because for them, it's like they don't want to jeopardize their running to do that. And like I'm the same way. Like if the moment, like I feel like social media or anything is getting in the way of my running, like it's that's the first thing that's gonna go out. It's not my running. Like I am. 99% committed to the running and then the 1% of the time I'm like, oh, like I'll pull my phone out and just record a clip. But it's, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm hiring somebody else to do it, I'm like, oh, like that just takes the weight off of me and I don't have to worry about it. Like on race day, I'm like, oh, like, like I have somebody that's going to get the clips. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's useful too, especially in a sport that is not like basketball or football where there's like regular instances to perform, regular opportunities for press conferences and interviews. I just think that mm-hmm. it gives you that opportunity to have that like frequent touches and, and contact points with your audience and potential audience. And so it just makes a lot of sense to me. And it's like, at this point, it's almost kind of surprising that everyone doesn't have like someone tailing them, you know, uh, at, yeah. at big, at big events, um, like this. So it's really, um, it's really refreshing to see that, um, that you're doing that. That's really cool. I also got the idea from Lino Signers from, he's a triathlete. <laughs> Okay. I love his videos. Like, yeah, I love yeah. watching his like build up to like his triathlons. And like mm-hmm. most of the time, like, like he always like talks about how like disappointing he is in the race. Cause like, he's never satisfied as well. And like, I feel like I'm the same way of like, I always will run something and I will, will like, I, whether that is the best race of my life or the worst race of my life, I will, oh, there's, I know there's always something to improve. And if I have a bad day, it's always because I did something that during that whole thing of like that whole build of like, I did something wrong. So I'm just pinpointing what I did wrong. And I have, I've been logging the last, we're in 2024. So I've been logging the last five years of my running um, from where 2019, 2020, I spent injured. And then I spent 2021, 22 trying to get healthy. And then it's just like, like I know of where everything that I've done for the last like five years. So it's refreshing to know, like, I know what I, I know what works best for me. And yeah, it's just, yeah, that's pretty much my biggest thing. I look forward to seeing all the content coming up uh, from the the daily updates. Uh, but I know that uh, in the in the interim, I think you just did your last latest video was kind of like your last big workout um, in the build. And mm-hmm. I'm guessing because of the weather conditions, it seems like a lot of the content has been at the gym on the treadmill for you. Yeah, there's a lot of talk going around right now of like, are the treadmill miles real? Are they harder, easier? Uh, what's your take on, on relying on the treadmill for such a, an important build like this? Uh, 
I always used to think the treadmill was harder than actually running outside, especially like race specific, specific stuff. But lately, like, I think for me, like just being always like, like I go into most of these workouts tired. Like I'm always fatigued just because we're running such big volume that it's just like, but I think for me, like running on the treadmill has gone easier just because there's less things I have to worry about. I don't have to worry about weather. I don't have to worry about how fast I'm running because the treadmill sets it for me. And if I want to go faster, I, I just hit like, not, like I don't have to put that like I, doesn't, like I don't have to like surge or anything. I just like put it up and then my legs are just really just like, so I think for me, I hope the treadmill is harder, but I, it just feels easier for me at least. Like I, I did 13 miles, uh, like five flat and it just felt significantly easier than I would, I would like my 10 miler that I had like two weeks earlier at the same pace. So I think for me, it, it feels easier running like marathon pace on the treadmill. I thought the other day, I, was, I mean, this is not a, any sort of sane way of doing it. I, one day I thought about maybe like, let me see if I can run a marathon on the treadmill at five flat. But I probably will never do it, but it's just, those are the thoughts I go through my head. Cause like for me, it just the treadmill has felt easier lately. Okay. Very cool. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I don't want to take up so too much more of your time. I know you got to make sure you're recovering and getting ready uh, for the taper. If people want to follow along in this content that's coming up or on your journey and look back at where you've been, uh, what are some of the best places that they can find you? Yeah, it's everything would be Runner Hobbs, Instagram, Runner Hobbs, TikTok, Runner Hobbs, Strava, and YouTube is just my full name. It would be Hop Tom Cheney. And just there's nothing i don't hide anything everything is out there for the world i wish you a good taper and uh, i look forward to seeing your race in orlando appreciate it thank you for having me